earth science isn't a fundamental way of looking at science. Earth science is about a thing, and the thing is the earth. So we draw from physics, chemistry, biology, atmospheric sciences, oceanography, uh, and try to understand the planet from all of those perspectives. And I think one of the great strengths of science is that people don't tell you what to do. You, in your heart and mind, think it is important to learn something, and uh, I think that's, that's the way it should be. Geology is one of those subjects that not many people consider to be a typical science. Where are the equations? Where are the laws? But what most people don't realize is that Earth and planetary sciences are one of today's most important and diverse areas of research. From studying physical landforms, to natural resources, to working with NASA to find life on Mars, there's a lot of things you could be doing here. This is exactly the stuff that Dr. Andrew Knoll specializes in. Geology, geobiology, paleobiology, you name it. In today's interview, he'll share his experience of working in such a niche field and show you how if you like physics, chemistry, or biology, this field is meant for you. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep seeing content like this. Before we start, if there's anybody you'd like to hear or any subject that you're interested in, drop a comment so we can get right to it. How would you explain your specialization in geology to students in eighth or ninth grade? Okay, well, in, in many ways, I'm a historian, but I'm a historian of our planet. And one of the things I've been interested in since I was a boy was the idea that when you look at a rock, it's a document of history. It, tell, it has a story to tell. And that if you learn how to read the language of rocks, you can actually discover how all the physical and biological attributes of our planet came to be. What other specializations or unique areas of research do you think could come up in this field in the future? Well, one of the things that I think is true of science in general now, and I think it's very exciting, is that we live at a time when many scientists are trying to integrate among different specialties. So when I was your age, I think the, the way to become, you know, a, a good scientist was to find one specialty and to bore down into it as deeply as you could. But now I think many issues, not least is our environmental future, really require that we be able to look at how several different disciplines uh, come together. So in my own work, it's mostly biology and earth sciences. But I, I think if you talk to someone who was working on cancer research, they would also talk about how they are integrating things that a generation ago people didn't talk. Certainly, that makes sense. Why is that the case though? Why do you feel like we're moving from pure research to more integrated sciences? I, I think that the simple truth is that many of the big questions in science, both fundamental questions and practical questions, are very hard to answer if you have blinders on to other disciplines. So simply, uh, and I think understanding just how the Earth system works, uh, you know, how biology and physical processes interact and do so through time, you, you can't be narrow and hope to make an impact there. So what it, what it tells us is that people who are just starting out should, at least in, in the first instance, try to be as broadly educated in science as they can be. What career opportunities other than pure fundamental research do you think one could have in, geog in geography or geology? Well, I mean, traditionally, probably most people who studied geology went into what are sometimes called the extractive industries, that is mining, uh, petroleum and, and, and other hydrocarbons. And there is still a, a, a market for those. Um, more and more people who study earth science are going into various types of uh, jobs that might be in government, they might be in consulting, but again, they're, they're really trying to understand what are the consequences of human activities for our planet and inform policy issues uh, 
on that. And, and then, and I'm an example of this. I mean, I studied Earth sciences, but I've been fortunate actually to work on Mars missions. So we are now at a, at a spot in not only the exploration of our solar system, but the exploration of planets beyond our solar system where insights from the earth sciences are really driving you know planetary exploration that's an interesting perspective and i say this because you know coming from a student who's been interacting with a lot of other students a common misconception is that a field like ge geology is all about rocks you know there's nothing more to it and you know i'm sure you would have a different take on that well, I mean, it's I, we now often talk about earth sciences rather than just geology, but, um, you know, I've spent the last 40 years in an earth science department that had atmospheric scientists, had oceanographers, had people called geobiologists who are trying to understand the interactions between organisms and, and the physical earth. Uh, there are people who are basically physicists try, you know, trying to use uh, geophysical principles to understand the, the workings of, of the earth, including such practical things as earthquakes. And that, so the, the interesting thing about earth sciences is that earth science isn't a fundamental way of looking at science. Earth science is about a thing and the thing is the earth. So we draw from physics, chemistry, biology, atmospheric sciences, oceanography, uh, and try to understand the planet from all of those perspectives. That's great advice. Um, what about you? I'm curious to know what your own personal experience was. When did you realize that this was the field you wanted to study and what was your path like? Well, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I didn't think much about being a scientist when I was a boy. I think if there was any scientific discipline that I at least thought was neat, it was archaeology. Uh, I remember when I was about 10 years old, a neighbor gave me a book called All About Archaeology by Ann Terry White. And I just thought it was wonderful that these people would go out and find evidence of history in the, you know, beneath our feet. And, you know, in a sense, you can probably draw a line from that to my looking at much older rocks and trying to understand their history. But I'll admit that when I was 18, ready to go to university, I really didn't have a very good idea of what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I grew up in a fairly rural part of the United States, so I only really knew about three um, professions. You know, I could be a doctor, I could be a lawyer, or I could be an engineer. I knew I didn't want to be a doctor or a lawyer, and I was pretty good at math, so I went to engineering school. And then after the first year in the engineering curriculum, I knew I didn't want to be an engineer either. So I, I just took a number of courses my second year in university, just math and science courses, hoping that something would, uh, you know, strike a chord. And two courses did, one, on, one in biology and one in earth science. And, you know, even as a, a sophomore at university, I was sitting in my room one night and I thought, wait a second, maybe these are not the separate universes that they seem to be from the way they're taught. Maybe from some perspectives, earth science and life sciences are some different sides of the same coin. And once that clicked, I, I was set. And then that, that, from that point on, I just went toward what I actually have done for the last 45 years. Other than that, what are your favorite, you know, the three favorite things about studying earth science? Um, one is that, as you can see from the, uh, my background, which is from uh, Namibia in, in Southwestern Africa, you get to see the world. Uh, the second is when you look at the rocks, you see a history book laid out in, in front of you. And, and then third, uh, a lot of science is, is collaborative. So, you know, if I'm working in Africa, I really want to work with African scientists. And so that has opened up many, many cultural opportunities. I've made many friends around the world. So those three things, I think, um, are really what have made me pretty happy through my career. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure 
actually tell people what they should do in science. And, and I think one of the great strengths of science is that people don't tell you what to do. You in your heart and mind think it is important to learn something. And uh, I think that's, that's the way it should be. Now, one of my questions comes from um, the perspective of looking at science in general. Now, a lot of people feel like doing pure research in any field in science doesn't really have much of a future or you can't really make much money in it. Um, would you have anything to say about that? Well, I, I think that we need fundamental science. Um, I was always struck by a report a few years ago that pointed out that the uh, Apple Corporation's iPhone, which is you know one of the most successful products in the history of American manufacturing, was based on eight breakthroughs in science. None of them were developed by Apple. They were all done by university scientists doing pure research. So uh, I, rather than saying there's no future for fundamental science, I think in the absence of fundamental science, there are real limits on what you can do by practical applications. We, we need both, but you know, Practical applications in science are genuinely based on fundamental discoveries about how the world works. Looking at your own experience, what advice would you give to students who are interested in science? I think the, the most important trait of a scientist is to be curious. And so uh, I, I think that if you, if you are curious and can cultivate curiosity, that is, you know, one of the best things a, a scientist can do. Again, I would go back and say, you know, even if you want to be a scientist, that doesn't mean you can forget about communicating, both in speech and writing. Uh, so, so that's important. And and I think maybe the most important thing is to say, you know, if you're thinking about science, you should sort of look inside yourself and say, is this really something I love? Uh, science is not easy. It, it is not a uh, eight hour a day job. Uh, it is a vocation. And I think when I look over the years at students who have not prospered in science, it generally had nothing to do with their intelligence. It was really that they couldn't convince themselves that this is what they wanted to, you know, really devote their life to. So, you know, Getting in touch with yourself and knowing what you love is pretty important. This is Science Teens, where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right career decisions in the sciences. I do this as a fellow student, and your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone working on this channel a lot of encouragement.